independent t-testing example. So the researcher wants to assess damage to memory due to excessive alcohol consumption. Okay. And we have a couple um, data points already provided. We know that we have um, 10 people in each one of the samples, right? So we have 10 people in a control group um, and 10 people in this um, experiment group, right? And then we also have the average scores on their memory test, and we have the sum of scores. And we also know the alpha level set at 0.05. Okay, so the independent um, variable would be um, excessive alcohol consumption, right? So um, this right here is our independent variable, right? Because we're going to, as the researcher, decide um, who is qualifies to be excessive alcohol consumers and, and who doesn't, right? And then our um, dependent variable would be um, this damage to the memory, where we're going to give them a, a memory test of some sort. Okay, so again, we have um, a control group, an experiment group. So we're going to call um, this uh, first group our um, experiment group and group number two as our control group. Okay, so I have a list of a whole bunch of lists of stuff here on the left hand side. This is all the bits of information we need to gather before we can run our um, statistical analysis. But um, we first need to find out if this is a one tail test or a two tail test. Like I said, we're going to go ahead and run a, um, the alpha at 0 0.05. Let's read through it again and see if it's a one tail test or a two tail test. A researcher wants to assess damage to memory due to excessive alcohol consumption. So damage is the key word here, All right? Um, that could be, I don't know, uh, no damage, less than no damage, so like they could have a, a better um, memory, they could have a worse memory. They just wanna see um, you know, the difference, the, the damage or the impact basically is what they're saying. So this is a two tail test, okay? Now, our degrees of freedom, because we're dealing with two different samples, is n minus 1 plus n minus 1, or degrees of freedom equals um, n, big N, however many people you have in your group, um, minus 2, right? So our degrees of freedom are, um, are, are 18, right? Because 10 um, minus 1 plus 10 minus 1 gives us 18. So our DF, our degrees of freedom is... Um, I don't think I have degrees of freedom here. Our degrees of freedom is 18, okay? And using your T-table, you can look at degrees of freedom 18 with um, uh, alphas at a 0 0.05, two tail, and you'll see that you get a T-crit, or a critical value of T, of plus or minus 2.101. So I'm gonna write that in here, um, plus or minus 2.0, um, I'm sorry, sorry, 2.101, okay? Or in um, graphic, right, if you wanted to see what it looked like, right, we're having two tails, and so we have 2.101 here in the negative side, and positive um, 2.101 over here in the, in the positive side. So we have two critical regions. Memory could either be going um, down or memory um, could be um, increasing. But if our T obtained um, falls in this zone, that's our fail to reject. Um, basically, we're saying there's no difference between drinking and not drinking excessive alcohol um, consumption uh, on, on effect of memory. Okay, so let, let's go through some of this. Now, we are going to have to find um, if it meets that homogeneity of variance, but we need to have a little bit of information first. Do we have all of our information? Do we have variance? We don't, but we have some of squares group here. So let's find variance first. Okay, so variance, right, equals um, sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. Okay, so let's do the first group first. Right, so we'll do um, this one over here. So we have, um, let's see here, 400. Right, because we have a little bit lower um, sum of squares. 400 divided by. Now the number or the denominator is going to be both the same because we have equal sample sizes. So 400 divided by 9 gives us 4. Point, or 44.44. Um, Lots of fours. Okay. So 44.44. Um, okay. And then some of our um, variance for our second group um, is we're going to use um, now 410 divided by 9. So it's just slightly um, bigger, right? Um, 45.5. So then um, to get uh, our F max, or our F, um, yeah, our F max, our F value, right, our F obtained, we take the, the larger 
right? Variance divided by the smaller one. So we're going to go 45.5 divided by 44.4, okay? And so our F max, basically, is um, 1.025. And then if you look in your F table, um, or your F max table, not your F table, because F table is for ANOVA, but F max table, you'll see that with um, our degrees of freedom and um, you know all the different things there, we have an F um, crit, right, or critical value of F as 3.72. So we're fine. We met that homogeneity of variance assumption. We didn't violate it. We can move on. And I have a whole other... Um, video if, it, if that went too fast with the F max and the F crit explaining um, all that. Okay, so let's probably find pooled variance. Oh, we skipped over null and alternative hypothesis. So null and alternative hypothesis is that, you know, mu1 minus mu2, because again, we're looking for um, the difference between those is zero, right? And so it's two tail. And so then mu1 uh, minus mu2 does not equal zero for alternative. Sorry about that. So let's find pooled variance. Okay. And pooled variance is your sum of squares for the first group plus the sum of squares for the second group divided by your degrees of freedom for the first group plus your degrees of freedom for the second group. Or 400 plus 410 divided by 9 plus 9. Or 810 divided by 18. So our pooled variance equals um, 40, uh, yeah, 45. Check my math there real quick. Okay, so we have pooled variance at 45. And again, I know this is a lot of information over here, but we have to keep all of our bits in order. I circle on the right and I list on the left. It's, it's a system that works for me. Okay, now that we have um, pooled variance, we can find the estimated standard error of the mean difference. So SM1, uh, M1 minus M2, right? and it equals the square root of the pooled variance divided by the sample size for that. And I'll put ones and down there and twos down there to kind of um, distinguish, right? So we have two different groups, right? Okay, so then we would go uh, square root of uh, 45 divided by 10 plus 45 divided by 10 so we get 4.5, my, my marker is not working, 4.5 plus 4.5, or square root of 9. Hmm. So this equals 3, okay? Okay, now we can start putting it into our T obtained formula. And keep in mind that t obtained equals this um, mean one minus mean or yeah mean two, uh, and then uh, minus mu one minus mu two. Again, that's zero, so most people don't even write it. Or you know that's okay. All right, let's see here. Divided by um, this estimated standard error of the mean. Oops, another s uh, minus mean two. Okay. Um, or 43, right, minus 57, okay? Again, most people just think of this as zero, so you can leave it off or not. It, it, it's fine either way. So um, we have 43, right, go make over here, our mean for our first group, minus um, 57, the mean for our second group. That's where I'm pulling those numbers from, okay? And then um, divided by this number down here, right, so three. Okay, so we get um, basically negative 14, right, because we're going to be a negative number, which is going to tell us that we're somewhere on um, this side of the number line, right, because all this is negative, all this over here is positive. So we know we're going to be negative. So negative um, 14 divided by 3. So our T obtained equals negative 4.67. That's huge. That's like over here. Negative 4.67. Negative 4.67. Okay. So we reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So what we've said is that alcohol consumption, excessive alcohol consumption, um, really does um, 
create this damage in this person's ability or people's ability for memory, right? And the damage it assesses, it, it brings that memory ability down. And because we reject the null hypothesis, we now have to find effect size. So we'll find Cohen's D first, right? And Cohen's D is that mean one minus uh, mean two divided by the square root of the pooled variance. Okay, so um, 43 minus 57 divided by um, three, was that our pooled variance? Yeah. No, sorry, 45. So square root of 45 or um, D equals 2.09. So that's like an extra large <laughs> effect size. Okay, 2.09, that's, that's really big. Okay, um, you can find um, percentage of variance accounted for too. So let's see where I can put um, that. I'm kind of running out of room over here, but this equals um, T squared, that's your T obtained, right? Divided by T squared um, plus your degrees of freedom. So that would be um, negative 4.67, but again, anytime we square it, it's gonna make it positive. Um, negative 4.67 plus the degrees of freedom of 18 gives me an R squared of, um, Wow, it's huge. Okay, 54.8%. Um, That's a lot. Okay. So there's a lot on this page. Um, it's an extremely long video. I, you can go back and, and watch it over and over again. Um, I think I got all my numbers right, but, you know, <laughs> it is by long hand. So it's fun. It, what this does is it really, with independent t-testing, it, it really explains um, how to compare two different populations, right? In this case, the population of someone or groups of people that have had just a chronic maybe alcoholism versus people that, you know, never drink at all. And is there an effect on memory? And in this t statistics with this data, we proved yes. So um, this is how you would do that problem.